So we're going to create the horns on the Gundam. We do that by creating a plane mesh in the mesh environment. Once that mesh is created, you can extrude by selecting Alt and then you drag it. Once that is done, you'll see on the back it's empty. This is an enclosed 3D object. So we're going to enclose it by creating two faces on the back of this mesh. You can select all the vertices and make sure they're touching. Then once that is done, we're going to crease all the edges so it's going to be perfectly rectangular. After that's done, the rest is just simply pulling edges and vertices and tweaking so it can look as closely as it can to the horns on the Gundam. Let the struggles begin. Now that that's all done, we're going to now mirror the horn. Here's a tricky part. You got to create a plane on the center body so we can create lines 
to cut the horn so that the horns will be flush with the centerpiece. To do this, you have to hit construct and if you look, you'll see an option that says create plane at an angle. You select the, the edge you want and then you'll rotate the plane so it's as flat as it possibly can be with the edge, I mean with the face. Once that is done, you create a line. You can either draw another line on the other side or you can mirror it. Once all the line creations are done, you can now split the horn body with the lines you've created using split body, one of my favorite tools. Now, so I get less confused, I'm just going to rename some things and then the horn pieces that are inside the centerpiece as a result of the split, I'm going to hide those bodies. You can remove them. Do not delete things. I've learned from trial and error and from other YouTubers that you shouldn't delete. You should only remove or hide. Once that is done, you will need to create a sketch that is on the face of the horn that is touching the centerpiece. The sketch will have to be an offset of 1.5 millimeters, which I learned later really needs to be 0.5, which you do to one side, you then do to the other. And this is where I should have realized that I did something wrong and I didn't. I'll explain this near the end of the video. The offset is what we are going to use to cut into the centerpiece so that the horn pieces can fit in. If you're not like 3D printing this, you're just watching this for fun or to learn, you don't have to do it. But this is something that I wanted to include in my 3D design. Yeah, so this step, I'm not really sure what caused or why I had to do it. Um, honestly, I'm just learning Fusion 360 as I create this tutorial. So bear with me for all the weird things that's going to be going on. But you need to do this if you're running into the same problems. If you're having any problems, it could be because you maybe didn't do this. You'll notice when you need to cut that the, f the, f the sketch is sort of inside the center piece. So you also have to cut both ways so you can cut the top of the plane well the top part of the centerpiece and the end part of the centerpiece where you want the horn piece to get into also when you cut make sure you're not cutting the horn piece when you click the options below that say objects to cut once all the cutting is done you will then extrude the horn piece to be flush with the centerpiece you can either do new body and then join them or just select join so it becomes part of the horn piece as you extrude.
So there was two mistakes I did. One I mentioned earlier about the offset. I had the offset wrong. This is an offset that I've tested with my 3D printer. So it could depend on the 3D printer and like the filament size you're using to see how the items fit. I also did learn if it is like a perfect square or a perfect corner, the offset needs to be more accurate and precise. But if it's like a bezel or a round edge, it doesn't matter that much. So it depends on that for 3D printing. The other goof is what I did with the horn in the mirroring process. And that was after I mirror it somehow when I cut the, the horns, something wasn't correct or something wasn't mirrored correctly, which is why you saw one horn had a funky face to it and I just ignored it like an idiot. So that actually caused a problem later on in the... I'll show you the quick solution I did that took me roughly maybe four seconds to fix that solved the problem. So if you don't care, stop watching. If you do care, continue watching. Okay, so here I'm going to attempt to explain how I fixed the mirroring issue of the horn. Okay, oops, let me zoom in. Okay, don't got the mouse, so forgive me, I'm using the trackpad. Okay. So, this is how the horns look in the video. Oops, okay. So what I did when I noticed the horns were looking weird is once I was in this design mode, I was like, huh, this design mode also has a mirroring feature. So since I noticed the horns were weird, I just mirrored it. Just see there. This is where I mirrored it and I'll do edit features so you can see. You can select the body, you do an object and you can do a mirror plane. This is the one that I mirrored, just so you're aware. And I hit okay and then mirrors. Now let me zoom in. Let me hide the centerpiece so you can see the difference. Okay. Huh. Okay. So that you can see right here, this piece inside. This is, if I select this one. Actually, you can see that that piece, there's something that's not matching. You can see from the line that obviously it's not symmetric because if it was, there wouldn't be that strange line there. So what I did was I just deleted the old horn that was mirrored in the tutorial in the beginning. So, well, I didn't delete. I'm sorry. I removed. Wrong word. I removed. And then that's all I did. And you can tweak the horns a bit, but yeah, this is how the horn should be. They're perfectly symmetric and it's gonna solve a lot of heading just to get the cutout right. So this is how the horn should be. Once that's done, you can, you know, create the offsets again and do all that junk. Um, I won't be showing that though because I don't have my mouse near me, so. Hopefully this helped.